drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be giving new GrainFarver users a quick start guide to get them brewing quickly and effectively with their new system. This guide should also prove useful to existing users to ensure they are on the right track. This will start with looking at extra equipment for your brew, then I will take you through the process required before your brew, and then move on to the brewing process itself. In terms of equipment, I would suggest that you buy a sturdy wooden mash paddle and a stainless steel version also. The wooden paddle is for mixing your grain at the start of the mashing process and the stainless steel paddle is exclusively for the boil. These are essential items. You could just buy one of the two, but they are separately ideally suited to each task. Optional but very useful extras all the same are firstly the Grainfather Whirlpool Aeration Paddle. This fits onto a drill and makes light work of these two tasks. Secondly the Grainfather Watermeter. This will give you a precise temperature reading during cooling. You could use a thermometer in the wart flow but this is far less fuss and far more convenient to use the watermeter. Another optional extra is a sparge water heater. You can sparge with just cold water if you wish, but do be aware that this will slow your brew time down considerably. I would also recommend a 1 litre jug for adding your sparge water. More on this later. More optional extras can be found in my Grainfather review video as shown on the screen now. These are actually in the form of modifications for the Grainfather. These are cheap yet effective. Naturally you'll also want something to ferment your beer in, and I would recommend something with full temperature control. You will also need a hydrometer for taking readings to see if your beer has reached its final stage. Fermentation is the single most important thing in the whole process. Please check my other videos on this channel for further in-depth information. Now on to cleaning. To start with, before using your grain fiber for the very first time, it is essential to give it a good clean. This is to remove oils from the manufacturing process. After the first brew, cleaning at the end of the brew will be sufficient. For a full guide on the cleaning process, please see my video that handles cleaning advice on this channel as shown on screen now. When you pick up your cleaning product, be sure to get a sanitizer. You will also need this for your fermentation vessel at the very least. Do note that there is no need to sanitize your brewing system. Let's now move on to pre-brew preparation. As I see it, one of the primary strengths of the Grainfather is its ecosystem, and this starts with the Grainfather recipe creator. The creator boasts thousands of recipes and also allows you to build your own. You save recipes that you are interested in to your account. There is also a Grainfather Connect smartphone app. This app syncs all of your saved recipes via the cloud. You simply select the recipe you wish to brew in this app and via Bluetooth this is sent to your Grainfather controller. The system now knows everything about what you are brewing. The Connect controller and the app will now guide you through your brew, giving you instructions on water volumes to add, uh, and when of course, and will also give you alarms of when you need to add boil additions like hops. It's really easy. Naturally one of the most important things in preparation for your brew is to actually have something to brew with grain and hops wise. And grain the most important thing here is that you have the right grain crush. The wrong grain crush will give you issues. The grain father is happy with a fairly fine crush, but do not overdo it. If you are milling your own grain, then I suggest a credit card size gap with a slow drill speed. If not, then be sure to explain your crush requirements with your supplier. You will find that a lot of suppliers actually have pre-made all grain kits that will give you a specific recipe of course there's an awful lot of convenience in this, but you do pay an extra premium for them of course. 
Moving on now just before the brew day, and another very useful feature of the Kinect controller is that you can set a timer for when it should start heating your water. This is very useful in saving time when starting your brew because your water can be the right temperature straight away. Also, if you are thinking to use an extension cable, then be sure that it can support the power of the system. This will vary depending on which country's version you have. Using the wrong cable can result in you frying the cable or restricted power to your brewing system. Neither are good. Let's now look at an overview of the process of brewing with the grain father. Firstly, either create or find a recipe on the Grainfather Recipe Creator and save it to your account. Open your Grainfather Connect app on your smartphone. Then go to the Connect section of the app and then scan for devices. You'll then see that it immediately connects. Then touch Start Session and select the recipe that you'd like to brew. You will now be guided on what to do next, and of course the first step is to add how much water you're going to need for the mash. This will be shown in the app itself, but also on the Connect controller too. Once your water is at the first mash step temperature, you are now ready to add your pre-milled grain. Do this by adding a small amount of grain at a time, and then give it a good stir before you add more. Ensure that every grain is wet and that you have a good mix. Once all of your grain is added, then spend some extra minutes stirring from the top, middle and bottom, just to be sure. You can now add the top plate flush to the top of the grain and begin your mash. Do note that during the mash you should always use the glass lid. This time and during the cooling phase are the only two occasions that this is used. Do not use it during the boil. During the time that the mash is taking place, for a normal beer at least, there is nothing further that needs your attention. During this period you can prepare items like your boil additions and also your fermenter ready for the war. Once the mash is all finished, lift your grain basket with the handle provided. Once that water level has dropped below the top plate, you can begin your sparge. Sparging is best done in 1 litre amounts at a time, ensuring an even coverage of the top plate as you go. Never allow the water level to rise above the finger plates. The ideal container for this water is a 1 litre jug. You will note that there is a system on the Connect controller when you reach the sparge that allows you to count in your sparge water by the litre. When you begin the sparge, the unit will start to increase the temperature of your wort rising to the boil. To ensure that all water and sugar flows from your grain, it is suggested that you leave the grain basket in the elevated position until you are close to a boiling temperature. As you are waiting for the temperature to rise to your boil point, I would suggest that you ready your brewing spoon. Once you hit the boil, your first concern should be to prevent a boil over. This is handled by using your brewing spoon to stir the top. With most brews there will be foam, and this is quite normal and nothing to be concerned about. Many brewers stir this in, allowing it to drop before adding their first hop addition. Boil additions shown in recipe are timed in minutes. The number of minutes is shown in, in minutes left of the boil. Most boil times these days are 60 minutes, so if you see a hop addition at the start of your boil, this will be timed at 60 minutes in this case. When you are adding anything into your boil, there are two things to keep in mind. Firstly, when adding the addition, add it on the opposite side to where your filter is situated on your brewing system. Secondly, once you have added the addition, you need to stir the addition into your wort so that it can start doing its job right away. The other important job during the boil is to gently scrape the bottom plate every 20 minutes or so. This will vastly lessen the build up on the bottom plate, avoiding any issues and will certainly make your clean up easier later. At some point during your boil, it is highly advisable that you run boiling hot wort through your counterflow chiller so that it's sanitised ready for the chilling phase. When doing this, pause your boil timer and only resume it once you are back up to your boiling point. 
During the chilling phase, it is important to know what temperature your wort is as it is being pumped from your grain father into your fermentation vessel. By using the water meter, you can be sure of this. By having a temperature too hot, you can potentially kill your yeast. And by having a temperature that is too cold, you can delay your fermentation start. Either way, it's not good news. This now concludes this video. Please feel free to ask me any questions you may have. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!